for IB atomic physics, you need to know about binding energy, fission, and fusion. They're all kinds of crazy. But we're going to combine them all a little bit, and we're going to look at some graphs, and hopefully you won't find them to be quite so crazy anymore. Now, you're going to need to become a familiar with a graph of binding energy per nucleon. Now, let's just say that you made a graph simply of just binding energy versus atomic number. So you're going to start out with your low atomic number elements like hydrogen, and you're going to go all the way up to things like uranium, plutonium. This graph would probably go up steeply and then just go over like this. But remember, this would be only binding energy. So this is not exactly what you're looking for. Although it's key to know that as all elements get bigger, their binding energy, or the amount of energy to blow them apart, does go up a little bit. Now this graph is more useful. This is the binding energy per nucleon versus our atomic number, or the proton number. Now if you guys are following along on your ISM packet, I recommend you copy in some of the, the key points on this. But remember, it's binding energy per nucleon. And this is in MeV, or mega electron volts per nucleon. Now, you'll notice and you'll want to label that up here, with the highest binding energy per nucleon, is iron. That means it takes the most energy per thing in the nucleus to blow it apart. So you want to make a note that iron is the most stable. And as you go up on this graph, you get more and more stable elements. Now, if you're over here with the massive elements like uranium and uh, plutonium, I guess PU, for sure. Uh, as you start taking these massive uh, elements and you start splitting them up, you get smaller elements like barium and krypton and iron, and those will become more stable. And whenever you're becoming more stable, you will release energy. So as you fission things and split them apart into smaller atoms, you are going to have a release of energy as you move this way with fission. Now, if you look over here, as you take these smaller elements, this is uh, hydrogen with an extra proton, that's deuterium. Here you've got a hydrogen with two neutrons, that is tritium. As you start taking elements like that and fusing them together, you zoom, shoot up here, and you get more stable. And so you are going to have also a release of energy as you fuse smaller ones together. However, look how steep this is. The steeper something is, the greater the release of energy will be. So clearly fusion is going to give off a lot more energy per atom of uh, fusion than you are going to have with the fission of uranium, plutonium, and those products. Fission. Fortunately, this is what makes nuclear power plants happen. Unfortunately, it also makes bombs, but either way, it's important. So let's learn a little bit about it. What fission is, a boom You got a big nucleus, and it's going to be hit by something, usually a neutron. And then it's going to get blown into two lighter nuclei. Now, usually, these have somewhat similar masses, although they're probably not going to be the same. Now, an example of this, and perhaps maybe one of the more famous examples, is you're going to have uranium. 235, the isotope um, that is quite fissionable, um, that's going to be 92, and you're going to start that by bombarding it with a neutron. Now that, one of the possible things that can happen is you could end up with barium, 56, 144, and you can end up with krypton, not kryptonite, that's a fictional mineral. Uh, like that, and you're going to end up with three spare neutrons. Now, if you 
take the mass of this. I'm just going to call this M1. And you take the mass of all of these things. Let's call this M2. Since energy is given off, you can probably figure out that M1 is greater than M2. Where'd the mass go? Holy cow, that mass turned into energy. And if you go back one page, you'll see that you start with this uranium thing, and you're going backwards, and you're ending up with this barium and the krypton. Those are more stable. They're higher up. When you move to more stability, you give off energy. Now, what's cool is these three neutrons, after you split up, if those three neutrons, that's what's first, you gotta send a neutron into this uranium atom to make it fission. And if those three neutrons hit three other uranium atoms, then maybe you get a chain reaction and they'll fission. This one will fission. This one fissions. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. And you get what's called a chain reaction, which is what's happening in nuclear power plants, in bombs. In power plants, it's more controlled. Now, fusion is even a little bit cooler than fission because fusion is what takes place in stars. That's supposed to be a star. It kind of looks like a monster. Take my word for it. That's a star. Uh, now, a way to describe fusion is like this. Take two little tiny nuclei, like hydrogen, boom, you slam them together and make a heavier nuclei, like helium, and lots of energy comes out. Uh, this is used in all the stars and also in a hydrogen or a fusion bomb, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, an example of an equation in which that would work uh, would be, let's say, you have two nuclei like this. Hydrogen with an extra, with a neutron in it. Um, these would both be deuterium. Uh, you would need a lot of pressure and heat to get them to combine, but they would make helium. Not normal helium, but this type of helium, and maybe an extra neutron. Now, much like what we saw with fission, if you take this mass and call this M1, and you take this mass, let's call this mass M2, you compare them. Since you got a bunch of energy out, you can probably guess that the first mass is greater than the second mass. Mass was lost, and that mass turned into energy. Hey, hey. Now, that also makes sense. If you go back, you are starting out with two of these deuterium guys, and you combine them, you move up here to, maybe not this helium, but one of the heliums up here, and you're moving up towards more stability. So you give off more energy. 